y'all. This is Marley K. Hope y'all are well. Got an important topic that I want to talk to you about today. Um, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the news about the new plague that is going around. It's a lot of news about it. A lot of things happening all over the world. My two cents is I think they have unleashed a new plague amongst the animals and they are setting the stage before they get ready to unleash it amongst us. And the reason that I say that is because, you know, I'm, y'all know, I wear a tin foil hat all the time. So I always question when they come out with these stories about testing these animals. And I'm thinking to myself, who in the right mind walking around testing deer in the middle of the summer? Why? You know, why now? Um, so I saw this story about them testing deer for a plague. I'm not going to call the name of a plague, but it's in the video. You'll see there. there's a theme here. And I'm going to talk about several different stories. So this may be a little a video that's longer than usual, but I want you to connect the dots. And I will put a link to each of these stories in the description. Hopefully the algorithms will allow the story to circulate, but it also may be a reason for it not. So what I do, I won't put it in the description. I will put them, put these stories in the comment section. Because I think sometimes when I put links in the description, it stops the story from circulating because the algorithms detect things that they don't want us to talk about. So um, just check the box. I'll make a comment box in the um, comment section of this video with all of the links to the stories that I share. But you don't need these stories. All you need to do is just do a search for the plague that's in this particular story here because it is the theme of this particular video i'm gonna put it in the title just gonna let you know that's what it's about so i just want to give you all a heads up that something is happening and we may be at the beginning stages of it it could be nothing but i just recall during the last epidemic from 2020, the two things that they were doing that I thought was suspicious and I never really paid any attention to because I never heard of it before. So I guess maybe that's why I didn't pay attention to it, but the testing of animals and water. And it was during the time when the thing was out here, you know, I guess had just been unleashed. It was like after the Super Bowl. But at the time I was living in Florida and I just remember them testing sewage water and finding all kinds of stuff. And I was like, when, since when did they start testing that? I've never heard of them making a public report talking about they testing for a virus or, you know, this bacteria. So, you know, to me it was just odd. But then I started noticing that they were doing it in, in certain cities. And then I, you know, really start paying attention. I said, so they're looking for something. They're doing surveillance, but why? And why in certain places? And why in this water? And why is it being reported? Because, you know, if, if you have any type of disease or bacteria or whatever, I mean, people go to the bathroom, people wash their hands. If the water hasn't been clean, it's in there. It hasn't been treated, it's in there. You know, anybody who has HIV, the virus is in their urine, it's in their blood when they go to the bathroom, if they have a menstrual cycle or if they just urinate or have a bowel movement, it's, it's in water. Um, and hepatitis, anything else. So I just found it strange that they were testing for these particular viruses and you know, there are a number of viruses that people have every single day on earth and they're never reported on. But these particular viruses or this one or these particular strains during the 
uh, was just just strange to me. So they're doing it again. And um, so I just want to give y'all a heads up that something is probably getting ready to go down. So um, get ready. So let's get into this story. So let me start from the beginning because I have several stories. This is like in the middle. Okay, so I reject all. Okay, so this first story is about Arctic tern chicks killed by suspected flu at UK's largest mainland breeding colony. This story is on Wales Online. I'm not sure when it came out. I think it came out a couple of hours ago because I, I just started doing some research. I've been seeing these stories for the last couple of days, but I want to do a compilation so that I can show you there is a pattern being established so that you can pay attention and so that you can position yourselves to be ready for what's coming. You need to be ready physically by getting your body in shape, getting your immune system together, detoxing your body, getting your things to cover your pink parts. I know people are going to say, oh, you know, this don't work and that don't work. Whatever kept you the last time, you do that this time. And that's, that's, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, you know, some people will say you're neurotic. You are... Um, a worry wart, you are extra, but those who persevere to the end <laughs> going to make it. And <laughs> we trying to make it to the end. Um, lastly, make sure you have cash. Make sure you have, you know, things in your house to take care of yourself. In the event you get sick or someone else in your house gets sick or in case they do a lockdown because They've already told us whenever the next thing happens, it's going to be bigger and worse than the last thing. And we're going to be locked down longer. And so just make sure you have stuff and be ready for that, because that's probably going to come maybe in the fall. But this may be the early um, signs of what's to come. Lastly, before I get into the story. Again, I'm going to. Um, hopefully compel you to reduce or altogether stop eating flesh that comes from the grocery store. And after I go through these stories, you will see why. Um, you need to try to become self-sufficient as possible. You need to try to grow your own food. You need to try to get your own livestock if it's possible if you cannot do it see if you can go in with people or invest some other type of way but you definitely got to learn how to wean yourself away from the grocery store and stop eating meat that's that's what they want us to do anyway but we're going to do it one because According to the Most High, we're not supposed to be eating this, this much flesh anyway. We have the, the most unhealthiest diet on earth. So letting go of flesh really is not going to be a huge issue um, for us. It, You know, I used to be like, I ain't never going to stop eating meat. But I'm about ready now. <laughs> I haven't completely weaned myself off. But I have gone days. I can, I can do it and I'm going to be okay. Um, as soon as I get bald head acres on track and we can get her growing some stuff on a regular basis, I will be okay. But in the meantime, I know enough people locally who grow things that I can share with and I'll be good. Um, and there's enough weeds growing around here where I could eat green stuff and I'm going to be okay. But we need to learn how to grow our own food because... Things are getting ready to change drastically. And notice over the last couple of years, they have been already um, demolishing the supply chain, stopping farmers from growing certain things. We have the war. 
that has pre been preventing the wheat and other rice and other th grains and things from um, being sold across the world. Uh, globalization is ending. And so a lot of nations are not sent exporting their, their goods to us and the goods, fruits and vegetables and grains and things. Um, so that's going to be problematic for the supply chain. In addition, um, stores have been cutting back. You can notice the shelves are getting light. They're, they don't stock um, as much of the, the staples that you could use to live off of long term. They don't stock those things like they used to. And so we need to take a look at that and start preparing um, with non-perishable food items and things that um, will last longer in the event that we have a power outage, that there's war, there's shortages, um, grocery stores are not able to get supplies depending on where you live. It's time to step up and prepare big time, y'all. Um, because again, the if you thought the last thing was bad, this is going to be worse because it's going to have a whole lot of other components that's going to go along with it, um, in, including the transition to the digital currency, um, war. You're going to have civil unrest, possibly a civil war, probably going to have political issues and political unrest, social unrest. Um I'm, I'm willing to hate to say bet. I'm, I'm willing to put my tenfold hat on. There's going to be a black man killed this summer violently. And it's going to be a summer of protest that's going to go on throughout the next political cycle because this country does not care anything about spilling black blood. Um, and it's a sacrifice. Plain and simple, we are sacrificial lambs for the adversary. And so that it is what it is. We know. So we just got to stay prayed up and um, repent for our sins, for our people, even the ones who are asleep. We got to do, we got to do what we got to do. Those of us who are awakened, we have an obligation to pray and look out for our brothers and sisters who are asleep. Um, and lastly, um, there's just a there's a, they're gonna start rationing because there are gonna be fewer um, things to feed us between the floods and the droughts over the last couple of years and the nat the alleged natural disasters that have damaged food supplies that have um, that were supposed to be harvested last year and this year it's gonna be a problem. So. Um, Invest less in things that are refrigerated. Invest more in things that are non-perishable. Also get seeds and things to grow your own food in the event that we are quarantined or there's just rationing and less food and more people that need to eat than food available. Um, you don't want to have to go to them folks to get nothing. And then I'm going to leave it at that. So the first story, Wales Online, more than 600 Arctic tern chicks killed by suspected bird flu at UK's largest mainland breeding colony. Sus suspected bird flu has killed more than 600 Arctic tern chicks at Britain's largest mainland uh, breeding colony. National Trust Rangers wearing hazmat suits recovered the dead birds at the Long Nanny Wildlife Sanctuary at Beadnell Bay in Northumberland. Long Nanny is home to Britain's largest mainland colony of Arctic terns with 1,600 breeding pairs and is a nationally significant site for little terns. The suspected outbreak comes 12 
months after bird flu wiped out more than 6,000 seabirds on the Farne Islands, just six miles up the coast near Bamberg. So far this year, rangers have seen lower numbers of, bird, of dead birds on the Farne Islands with 500 carcasses removed to date, I'm sorry, recovered to date. In recent days, the number of dead birds has increased with a mix of species picked up, including kittiwakes, black-headed gulls, and guillemots being the most affected. The team is currently waiting for test results to confirm whether or not these deaths are once again due to bird flu. Six rangers are typically stationed at Long Nanny, which is home to three species of breeding shorebirds, the Arctic tern, little turn and ring plover so anyway that's just one story so let me move to the next story so this is from Merco press it says the owls the organization that makes the owl sound is worried about human to human transmission of the bird flu and that you know they're saying that it couldn't be ruled out so this story is from february of 2023 the organization that makes the owl sound experts have expressed their concern after two cases of human humans catching H5N1 avian flu were confirmed this week. During a virtual press conference Friday, that organization's director of epidemic and pandemic preparedness and prevention, Sylvie Briand, said the situation was worrying which is why I'm telling you about it. Because when the devil talks, you need to listen and pray and use your own weapons to protect yourself. The two cases were reported in Cambodia where local officials are in contact with WHO experts to jointly decide on the next steps to handle the crisis, which has led the international agency to reassess its parameters regarding the malady's the, uh, uh, threat to humans. The conclusions reached earlier this month are now up for review. And notice that's just in time, it was in February, as they were reviewing the new treaty on how to deal with pandemic preparedness. Anywho, on Thursday, Cambodian authorities reported the death of an 11-year-old girl from the H5N1 virus and began testing 12 of her contacts. So here we go again. Her father, who had shown symptoms, also tested positive for the virus, it was reported. The global H5N1 situation is worrying given the widespread of the virus in birds worldwide and increasing reports of cases in mammals, including humans, Brian said, who takes the risk of this virus very seriously and urges all countries to intensify surveillance. She watched. I'm sorry, she added. It is not clear whether human to human transmission had occurred or whether the two cases were due to the same environmental conditions. But, you know, this is my issue. It's like they never tell you, like, did the girl eat chicken or some bird from the wild? Like, how she, how she get it? Like, they never tell you that. Did she get it from the cat and the cat ate chicken, bird? Like, you don't know nothing. On Thursday, Cambodian authorities reported an 11-year-old girl from Pre Vang province had died from H5N1. Notice that it's 11-year-old girls, so very specific, 11, just saying. The subsequent testing of 12 of her contacts that her father also had the virus. Notice the dad is just getting the virus, not the mamas, now the dad is. Y'all don't find that suspicious that they want to get the brown daddies out of the way. All right. Uh, so far, it is too early to know if it's human to human transmission or exposure to the same environmental conditions, Brianne said, from Geneva. The global H5N1 situation is worrying given the widespread of the virus in birds around the world and the increasing reports of cases in mammals, including humans, she said. Um, 
who takes the risk from the virus seriously and urges heightened vigilance from all countries. Earlier this month, the WHO assessed the risk to humans from H5N1 bird flu as low, although its Director General, Dr. Mm, I'm not going to say that. I say Dr. Tedros said the recent spillover to mammals needed to be monitored closely. Of course it does. Since H5N1 first emerged in 1996, notice the year ends in six. We have only seen rare and non-sustained transmission of H5N1 to and between humans, but we cannot assume that will remain the case and we must prepare for any change in the status quo, he said. Bird flu is a highly infectious strain of avian influenza A virus that can cause severe respiratory disease and deaths in birds. While it has caused outbreaks before, the current epidemic has led to the devastation of avian populations around the world, including wild birds and commercial poultry. Mm-hmm. From January 20, oh, I'm sorry, from January 2003 to January 2023. There have been 860 cases of human infection worldwide, 457 of which were fatal. However, only six of these cases and two deaths occurred since the start of 2021. Of course, because they had put out the other cootie bugs and the other cootie bugs was eating us up. So, you know, just that's amazing. I got my tinfoil hat on, so that's why y'all getting extra commentary today going to be wild. Leading experts on influenza met this week to discuss the threat posed to humans by H5N1. Notice this is in February of 2023. Here we are in July. The group of scientists, regulators, and vaccine manufacturers meet twice a year to decide which strain of seasonal flu to include in the vaccine for the coming winter season which is why I'm telling you, get your stuff together, people. The winter is coming. Winter is coming. In this case, for the Northern Hemisphere, we are more prepared than for, y'all see what it is right here, than the last thing we just got done with. But even if we are more prepared, we are not yet prepared enough, the lady said. We need to really continue the efforts for a flu pandemic. Experts have been tracking H5N1 clade 2.3.4.4B since it emerged in 2020. And recent reports of mass deaths in infected mammals from seals to bears, as well as potential mammal to mammal trans transmission on a Spanish mink farm last year have raised concerns. I'm just like, I'm just confused. Who is testing for this stuff? How How is it being transmitted? I'm not saying that it's not real, but I just find it so coincidental. The timing, I find it coincidental that it's attacking animals at a time when they don't want us to eat no meat. They don't want you to have no wild meat and they don't want you to have farm raised meat. They don't want you to eat meat. Y'all going to eat that soil and green. Y'all going to eat them green sticks on Wednesday and Friday. And y'all going to eat them red sticks on the other days. Watch that movie, Soil and Green. Several companies that produce seasonal flu vaccines can also make pandemic flu vaccines. It was reported that GSK, that's GlaxoSmithKline, and CSL, I don't know who CSL is, Securus, I don't know how to pronounce that, so excuse me, are already working on the United States Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority to test shots based on one of the closely related strains. We're going to stop right there. Let's go to the next story. Exclusive France picks Germany's Boehringer 
Ingelheim for bird flu vaccines. This story came out on July 12th, 2023. And it's on AOL.com. Paris, France has chosen Germany company, German company, Boehringer Ingelheim to supply the 80 million doses of bird flu vaccines needed for its vaccination campaign to start in October. An agriculture ministry sp spokesperson told Reuters on Wednesday. The government launched a tender in April to vaccinate ducks against avian influenza, commonly called bird flu, that has ravaged flocks around the world and led to the culling of hundreds of millions of birds. The campaign would make France the first country in the European Union to vaccinate poultry against the deadly virus. This is why y'all need to stop eating birds. Agriculture Ministry officials said last month that tests carried out in France on vaccines from French firm Siva Animal Health and Boehringer Ingelheim showed favorable results. Now, this Siva Animal Health, uh, I did a video on that a couple of months ago, um, and it took me, I really had a hard time trying to um, to get that video uploaded, but anywho, y'all see what time it is. They get ready to start vaccinating these birds. Why me come off of flesh? All right. Next story came out a day ago. It's on the BBC News. It says avian flu cases confirmed on Scottish nature reserves. The uh, National Trust for Scotland said two kittiwakes had tested positive at its site at St. Abbs Head in the Scottish borders. Scotland's Nature Agency also said bird flu had been confirmed at its Forvey Reserve in Aberdeenshire and on the Isle of May in the Firth of Forth. Ooh, that was tongue twister. Nature Scott said its avian flu task force was on high alert due to dead seabirds, num seabird numbers in coastal areas. It comes after more than a thousand dead birds were removed from Aberdeenshire beaches in recent days. A Stonehaven, more than 520 birds were recovered. I'm sorry, at Stonehaven, more than 525 birds were recovered over the course of three days, while a further 120 were collected at Cruden Bay. And on Wednesday, more than 250 dead birds were removed from Inverbury. As well as 150 from Balmidi or Balmidi. NTS said positive tests on two kitty wakes at St. Abbs Head were not unexpected due to the number of dead birds, but stressed many thousands of others were still doing well. Nature Scott said avian flu had been confirmed in sandwich terns, common terns, kitty wakes herring gulls, black-headed gulls, and guillemots so far this year at Fort Movi, I'm sorry, at Fort Mo Forvi, more than 200 sandwich terns have died with test results awaited on common and arctic terns. Kittiwakes have also tested positive on the Isle of May. Nature Scott said overall picture across the country was not yet clear with tests on some birds and other parts of the of the having come back negative. So that's a picture of where the birds are found on this island. Wildlife manager Alastair McGuigan said, unfortunately, after a quieter period, we are beginning to see an increase in the number of dead birds being reported through our surveillance network, particularly on the East Coast. While we are thankfully not seeing the large numbers of dead birds around breeding sites that we did last year, this development is really concerning. 
We are working hard with all partners in Scotland's avian flu task force to understand what is happening and take action to make our wild bird populations more resilient. Dr. Liz Humphreys, British Trust for Ornithology, principal seabird ecologist, said it was clear that seabirds were still being badly affected by avian flu despite the situation initially seeming, seeming less catastrophic than last year. Paul Walton of the RSPB said seabird numbers had already dropped by nearly 50% between 1986 and 2019 prior to the devastating impacts of bird flu last year. He said it was time for conservation efforts to be prioritized and resourced to help protect these incredible creatures. Members of the public should avoid touching sick or dead birds and report them to the government. So I'm not going to read any more of this, but I will include it in the comment section. Next story. This story came out Friday. And I got it from Microsoft Start. So it says new bird flu vaccine could protect California condors from deadly strain. It's being called the deadliest bird flu in history. Mm -hmm. For the first time, it is heavily affected, affecting wild birds, which includes California condors. But with an emergency vaccine on the way, on the way, there's hope when it comes to saving the species. Now, this this whole thing, since I've been reading all these stories, it really reminds me of um the movie Soylent Green when the little old man, I can't remember his name, he got tired. He was just frustrated after um, going to this library and getting these books about um, what life used to be. And he decided he was going to commit suicide. So he went to this facility and I hate to tell a story, but if you haven't seen the movie, you should see it. It's old, but it's, it's, it's timely. If you can... Um, wrap your mind around the, the time difference and when the movie was made. But as he was dying, you know, they gave him this drink or and, and he was laying up in the little bed by himself in the room with the door closed and they had these big movie screens. And he was seeing all these birds and all this wildlife and all this stuff that was no longer around because you know, the, the story is based in New York. And so you're in a concrete jungle with a bunch of people who starve into death and everybody's poor and dirty and it's crowded and they're eating soil and green. They haven't eaten any meat or real food in uh, apparently forever. And I guess he figured out what soil and green was and he decided he didn't want that no more. So he was like, I'm, I'm out of here. But this reminds me of that, you know, I was wondering why they were showing all these animals and wildlife and all this stuff and how things were pretty like the old times. And apparently he lived long enough to remember that. I'm sure there were there were young people and young children at the end of the movie. So those people never knew anything except for hardship, soil and green, dirty, you know, people sleeping on top of each other. And then at the beginning of this movie, you know, they were showing wildlife, nature, um, just rural settings. And then they went to Industrial Revolution, you know, lots of cars, big cities, highways, lots of people. And then you get towards the end of the intro and there is like desolation, dirty water, pollution, overcrowding, just not pleasant. So every time I, I read about these things, it just reminds me of the glimpses, some glimpses from that movie, um, you know, coming from a rural place. And you, I just could not imagine birds not being around, deer not running, you know, possums and otters and um, chipmunks and just all the different things, buzzards, that stuff, rabbits, snakes. 
I, you just cannot imagine living around here and not seeing any of that stuff. But it looks like, you know, that's the goal to have it to where there's nothing in the wild. There's not agriculture being grown. You're only going to eat 3D food and soil and grain. Anywho, back to my story. At almost 10 feet, the majestic California condor is unmistakable when seen flying through the air. But the journey for these birds isn't as seamless as its flight. The critically endangered species facing a number of threats over the years dropped to an all-time low of just 22 birds back in 1982. 40 years later, there are now 500 in the world. Groups like Ventana Wildlife Society are working to save the species. The Ventana Wildlife Society started releasing condors in Big Sur in 1997. So we've been working at it now for 26 years, said Kelly Sorensen, Ventana Wildlife Society Executive Director. Sorensen says lead poisoning has been and continues to be the main threat to these birds. But there is a start, startling new outbreak that also that's also extremely concerning. In Arizona, an outbreak took place in the condor population affecting 25 condors. 21 of those died, said Sorensen. Unfortunately, with uh, California condors, our population is so small that we don't have the, that breadth of species population to be able to withstand that said Ashley Blackford, uh, California Condor Coordinator for U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So, anywho, I'm going on, but um, I just wanted to show you that birds are dying all over the world in this, you know, over the last couple of days, they're talking about it. So, when the powers talk, when the powers do stuff and their work is working and they start talking about it, we need to pay attention. So this is, I found this story really interesting. This is from the University of Minnesota. It was published on July 5th, 2023. It says, Polish scientists probe possible food chain link to H5N1 avian flu in cats. Y'all know they make a lot of cat food with chicken parts. In an, ongoing invest, in, on, in an ongoing investigation into the source of the H5N1 avian flu in, ra, in a rash of cat deaths in Poland, scientists found the virus in one of five submitted chicken meat samples that the cats ate. Polish media reports about the findings prompted pushback from the country's agriculture officials in the poultry industry, according to the statements translated and posted by Avian Flu Di Diary, an infectious disease news blog. Some of the sickened cats were kept indoors, leading to questions about how they contracted the virus. Ahead of a media report, Polish virologists in a July 3rd Twitter post explained that they tested five submitted chicken samples from cat owners, one of which yielded the virus. They said they couldn't determine if the meat was contaminated before or after customers opened the product. So notice they did not say whether it was cat food or whether they had canned chicken and um the folks were eating it and fed it to their animals like that you know this is where the story is gray but in any event y'all got enough to know it came from some chicken okay today poland's agriculture ministry posted a statement that said the media report over interpreted the virologist's findings and also emphasized the safety of polish poultry products and the food chain linked to the cat illnesses isn't proven. Poultry outbreaks in Togo and Poland. In other H5N1 developments, Togo reported an outbreak at a poultry farm in Gulf Prefecture, which is near the country's capital of Lom. According to not a notification yesterday, 
from the organization that makes the owl sound for animal health. The virus killed nearly all of the 1,500 birds at the farm and the remaining ones were cold. Elsewhere, Poland reported an H5N1 outbreak that began on June 29th at a poultry farm in Matopolski province, which killed 14 of 127 susceptible birds, according to notification today from that organization. So y'all see what I'm talking about. This you, you can kind of see where it's going. Last time it was in the air. It might be in the air this time, but it may also be in the food supply. So that's why it's imperative that you um, grow your own food. And, and get this stuff right now. Why is it we in the early stages? Even though it's in the early stages, you know, you just can't be too sure. So, if, you know, again, that's why my recommendation to reduce the flesh you eat uh, and source it. That's going to be your safest bet. Bird flu may affect, I'm sorry, may infect humans easily. UN agencies issues issue warnings, know how to prevent the outbreak. And this was in Times Now Digital. It's on Microsoft Start. It came out seven hours ago. New Delhi, three UNs have warned against an ongoing rise in bird flu outbreaks across the world, raising concerns that the virus might infect humans easily. The agencies have urged countries to strengthen disease surveillance and improve hygiene at poultry farms to curb any kind of deadly infections. This organization that makes the owl sound, along with the Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Organization for Animal Health, have said that infections can cause severe disease with extremely high mortality rates. They got um, these mosquitoes out here doing stuff to people too. So they got stuff going on here and this is in New Delhi, but let's stick to the chicken stories right now and the bird fruit. There is a recent paradigm change in the ecology and epidemiology of avian, of avian influenza, which has heightened global concern as the disease spread to new geographical regions and caused unusual wild bird die-offs and alarming rise in mammalian cases, said Whoa, Science Chief Gregorio Torres said in a statement. Human bird flu cases, according to doctors, are usually the result of direct or indirect exposure to infected, live, or dead poultry or contaminated environments, which means you could eat dead chicken and it's in the grocery store. You won't know, according to this. So you have been warned. What is Guillain-Barre syndrome that has caused health emergency in Peru? Should India be worried? According to statistics in 2022, 67 countries across five continents reported highly pathogenic H5N1 bird flu outbreaks infecting more than 131 million domestic poultry, which later died or were culled in affected farms and villages. Earlier this year, 14 countries reported outbreaks, mainly in North America, as disease continues to spread. So, I will put this story in the description. Moving on to the next story. I have two more, y'all. I'm almost done, but I want to show you there is a pattern emerging I wanted to give you the different stories because all of them have different pieces. No one story is giving you everything that you need. So as you can see, every time we read something, there's something 
else that comes out, which is why I recommend reading global resources from all over while you can, so you can get as much information as you can. Uh, this story came out on today, July 13th, 2023, and this is from phys.org, phys.org news. So it says, um, well, let me read the title. I'm sorry. The organization that makes the owl sound is worried bird flu might adapt to humans more easily. The organization that makes the owl sound warned Wednesday that the recent surge in the bird flu outbreaks among mammals could help the virus spread more easily among humans. Since late 2021, Europe has been gripped by its worst ever outbreak of bird flu, while North and South America have experienced severe outbreaks. This has led to the culling of tens of millions of poultry worldwide, many with H5N1 strain of the virus, which first emerged in 1996. But there has been a worrying spike in infections in mammals. Avian influenza viruses normally spread among birds, but the increasing number of H5N1 avian influenza detections among mammals, which are biologically closer to humans than birds are, raises concern that the virus might adapt to infection to I'm sorry to infect humans more easily. The owl organization said in a statement. In addition, some mammals may act as mixing vessels for influenza viruses, leading to the emergence of new viruses that could be more harmful to animals and humans. Outbreaks have been reported in 26 species, including farmed mink in Spain and sea lions in Chile. H5N1 was recently detected in cats in Poland paradigm change. So are we talked about a paradigm change. So they basically are restating the same stuff over and over again. So it says the WHO said that since 2020, a variant had led to an unprecedented number of deaths in wild birds and poultry in many countries in Africa, Asia, and Europe. The virus spread to North America in 2021 and then to Central America and South America in 2022. Just gonna make sure every continent don't have no birds. You're gonna eat that soil and green. You're gonna eat that green stuff, that plant-based 3D stuff. You're gonna eat that. That's what's gonna happen. Last year, 67 countries and five continents reportedly reported highly patho pathogenic H5N1 bird flu outbreaks with more than 131 million domestic poultry lost due to death or culling in affected farms and villages. Get out of here. These, uh, in 2023, another 14 countries reported outbreaks mainly in the Americas as the disease continues to spread. These outbreaks, outbreaks have caused devastation in poultry and harmed farmers, farmers' livelihoods, and the food trade, the Owl Sound organization said. Several mass death events have been reported in wild birds, the, the UN Health Agency said. Although largely affecting animals, these outbreaks pose ongoing risks to humans, it said. The epidemiology of H5N1 continues to rapidly evolve. Listen to those words, said the FOA's chief veterinary officer, Keith Sumption. Or Sumption. Sumption. That's what I'm going to say. He pleaded for timely sharing of genetic sequences to monitor for changes resulting in better risk assessment and disease control. Right in time, as soon as the treaty is signed, and here we go with this nonsense. And the first official vaccine passport is in Europe. Here we go. All right, next story. EU urges keeping cats and dogs inside over bird flu. This is in Straight Times, and this article came out 57 minutes ago. It's on today. 
The European Food Safety Authority called on Thursday for cat and dog owners to keep their pets inside in response to record cases of avian influenza across the world after 24 cats tested positive in Poland. But something happened, and I'm just going to skip over it because it kind of keeps saying the same thing. Um, something happened in 2021 that made the group of viruses much more infectious. I'm sure it did. If you keep messing with stuff, it's, yeah, of course it's going to be more infectious. Shoot. These people must think we crazy. Everybody ain't sleep. According to a World Health Organization collaborating center studying influenza in animals. In rare cases, human have con uh, humans have contracted the sometimes deadly virus, usually after coming in close contact with infected birds. But nobody can ever tell you how you come in contact with infected birds because some people don't have animals. Some people only buy food from the store or from markets. Uh, and if you can't source where the food comes from, you don't know. Uh, it, so, you know, it's like without surveillance, you don't know. But even with surveillance, these folks have proven with um, gain of function uh, activities, they can do anything. They can make stuff appear anywhere. Um, and I read someplace in the comment section that somebody who works for airlines was talking about they were shipping um these drugs for this particular virus all over the world via airplanes. So this may be the early stages, but it looks like this is probably going to be the next thing and it's going to be bad. So anywho, <clears throat> the virus has also been detected in a soaring number of mammals. It is recommended to avoid exposure of domestic cats and dogs and in general carnivore pets to dead or diseased animals. EFSA said in a bulletin, possible measures are keeping dogs on a leash and confining cats indoors in areas where extensive circulation of HPAI viruses in wild birds has been confirmed. In recent weeks, five dogs and a cat have been infected in Italy. Since June 10th, 24 cases have been reported in domestic cats in various regions of Poland. The source of contamination has not yet been determined by, with one hypothesis being that they have ingested raw poultry meat infected with the virus. In April, the United States started testing several vaccine candidates for potential use on birds. So y'all need to know. Let me go to the last story because y'all see what time it is. Y'all see what it's getting ready to be. Bird flu may infect humans easily. UN agencies issue warnings, know how to prevent the outbreak. It seemed like I just read this story. Yeah, I did. But anywho, I'm not going to read it again. So I'm done with this subject. I don't even think I need to say nothing else. If you follow my channel, you already know what time it is. So y'all need to get to prepping. Get your, get your vitamins, get your natural remedies, get your detox going, get your exercises going, get your immune system going, get your leafy greens and your things that you need to have in your home to, um, you know, preserve your life. Make sure you have what you need in the event that you are sick so that you can quarantine safely, have your hygiene products and, um, you know, all the things that you need, tr extra trash bags, disinfectant, so on and so forth. Um, I would recommend having masks until they figure out how this stuff is passed and not those little cheap hospital masks. Get you some good masks. They're going to cost money now, but get them while they are in stock. Get your non-perishable foods, get your juices um, and, and Gatorades, um, things for dehydration. You need to be prepared for everything uh, because this seems like it's going to be global. It's going to be bad because they're telling us it's going to be bad. Um, it's in the animals, it's in the food. So you also need to be finding your local food sources in the event 
that um all the flesh is culled from the store. Last year was beef. This year's chicken again and poultry and even stuff in the wild. So they're going to make it where people who want to hunt can't hunt. So it's just always something, I tell you. It's just always something. But we got to pray. Let us pray. Let us continue to prep. Repent for your sins, sins of commission, sins of omission, so that you can be found worthy to escape all that is coming on this earth. Pray that our brothers and sisters wake up because these people out here trying to get us. Oh, they're trying to get us. I'm so tired of them. But anywho, if you like this story and like this type of content, please like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Please share this with people you know because people were caught off guard last time. We are not trying to be caught off guard no more. Pray for spiritual discernment so you'll know what to do and where to go and ask the most how to put the right people in your path, the right news stories in your path. Make sure everything that you're trying to achieve, all the stuff that you need to get, make resources available for you so that you can have what you need so you can endure to the end. Consider following me on rumble and odyssey in the event that this channel is taken down i don't know how long this story is going to stay up but i'm going to put it up and hopefully it'll get over to rumble if not i will stick it over there so if you follow me on that channel everything that's on youtube will also be on um odyssey so you can watch this video or if you share it um consider um also sharing the links to the uh, Odyssey channel as well, so that uh, people who are looking for this type of information are able to find it. Consider hitting that bell notification so that anytime I upload new content, you will be notified. Um, I'm A lot of people are not getting notifications and you have to understand why they are not because they are vested in um, making sure as many people remain ignorant and asleep as possible. And so, I'm a watch person and I am trying to watch, keep y'all watching so we are awakened and we know what's coming so we can develop our own countermeasures because we have to be the light in this dark world. Lastly, if you feel led to support the channel, links are in the description. If you feel led to follow me on social media, I am on Facebook and on Instagram. I do not post to those sites regularly. Uh, YouTube is my primary uh, platform because the majority of people use YouTube and I will be here until it goes down. Uh, so if you uh, are looking for me and I'm not here, you know, look for me on Instagram, look for me on Facebook, but understand all these platforms work together. So if I'm locked out of one, I may be locked out of all of them. Uh, Take the news while you can, people, because things are getting ready to change. There is um, a lot of activity in Taiwan. Um, so I don't know if they're setting up for World War III and they're ready to kick it off. But please don't delay. If you can do anything to uh, position yourself to be better off for all the things that they're planning, do so expeditiously. Do not play around. Y'all know I'm I'm a serious person. I don't be playing around anyway, but too much stuff is happening. Um, too many distractions, too many things are happening. And we are at the height of the summer, getting ready to go into fall. When if you're going when it's time to get sick, that's the beginning of that season. So um, let us do that. Also, we got bricks coming up. BRICS is coming up. All these new CDCs are trying to go online. A lot of things happening, y'all. So please, please, please do not be labor preparing yourselves for what's coming because these people got plans for us. And if you don't have plans for yourself, they got plans for you. So with that said, 
I love y'all. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for supporting. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for caring. And thank you for being awakened because sometimes I feel like I'm crazy because I see stuff and I want to know things so that I can share with my people uh, who, you know, may not know. You don't, you don't have time to get all these different notifications. I did have one more thing that I want to share with you. Uh, let me see. Before I go, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I'll share it in another video. But anyway, if you have not signed up for the John Hopkins uh, COVID report, I recommend you do that. I've been signed up for the last three years and they came out with something really interesting today, but it ties into all these different stories that um, I shared with you, which led me to do my research, which is why I ended up doing this video on that particular topic. But some something is going on and y'all need to really be prayed up um, because these weapons, um, they're forming against us. They're going to be prosperous on a lot of people because a lot of people are asleep. A lot of people act like they cannot stop eating meat. A lot of people love uh, Uncle Sam's remedies and they love going to the doctor. So it's going to be a problem for a lot of people. But if you can try to convince people of what's going on, y'all see the plots, um, do what you can to not become a casualty of their war on humanity because we really are living in some strange times and um, they're attacking the food supply. So even if you're trying to live off the land, they're trying to make that impossible to do what you can, but it looks like um, they are attacking all flesh. So learn how to become a vegetarian <laughs> because that, that's what they want. So, um, in order to survive and not be sick, in order to be healthy, we, you know, we have to look at the signs and move accordingly. So let us do that. All right, y'all. I am out.